Yo guys, one thing we seriously need to talk about. How does Facebook work in 2020? Because you guys watching right now, I'm just gonna be honest. I don't have anything against you guys, of course. I love you guys. You're watching right now, you're the best person in the world. But how does Facebook work in 2020? Because I really gotta correct a couple of you guys here because Facebook has been changing. A lot of you guys that's coming in, wants my coaching, whatever, gets a free 30 minute consulting call, which I will announce in a second. They do a lot of weird stuff on Facebook. They do a lot of outdated strategies that clearly does not work anymore. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to drop ship using Facebook ads in 2020. Before this video starts, go down, drop a like, and and subscribe to this channel because we drop powerful content and now let's get into the video so the last video's free 30 minute consulting call giveaway winner is Kevin Corpus you can message me my Instagram will be here same go for all of you guys who want to get into the coaching want to get your life changed you also message me on Instagram here again and without further ado into the video of how Facebook has changed man or girl Facebook is different you can't just use whatever you used to but I'm gonna teach you guys what no guru does they charge this in a course but I'll give you for free in this video so make sure to stick until the end Okay guys, so what we are going to talk about now is going to be lookalike audiences, it's going to be CBOs, it's going to be the fact of going broad, should you go broad or should you not go broad. Basically, I, I just won't waste any time, I'll just tell you guys right now what we're going to do and without further ado, let's start with the first one. First one is broad guys. Facebook these days is incredibly broad and if you don't go broad, you lose. So, what? first of all, what do I actually mean by going broad? I'm going to explain to you guys right now. Going broad on Facebook, this all means like... You know, not targeting too specific. I'm gonna get into this in a second. So let's just say you're running a dog product. If you're running a dog product, I would say like being specific is targeting like happy dogs, dog food. Of course, I would do it for sure, but I'm just giving you guys examples for you guys to understand. So the natural way of running a dog product on Facebook right now, for example, and this applies to every single product you guys are running, is for example, the interest dogs, which is super broad, of course, will actually most likely perform better than the interest dog lover. But back in the days when I started, like I used to watch Thaddy, for example. He had a good channel back in the day. I, he still have a good channel. Don't get me wrong. But I used to watch him and I watched a lot of other people as well. And what they said, by the way, in a second here, I'm going to give you guys a magic trick on how to double your ROAS. Yes, double your ROAS. Went from 7 ROAS to 14 doing this. But what they did was they always said like, you know, I'm not saying Taddy did this, but I, some of these guys said it. They always said do like a really small interest that's really related. So for example, like I said, the psychology in those days where like if you sell a dog product, you should target dog lovers because dog lovers is more niche than dogs, which means people that's interested in dogs, they might not have a dog, but the people that's interested in the interest dog food will definitely have a dog. Cause like you could only imagine how many people that's interested in dogs on Facebook, but don't even have a dog. It makes a lot of sense that if you run dog food instead of dogs you'll target more people that actually has a dog compared to if you're just targeting a general interest but how it's changed to these days is you can target dogs and Facebook will optimize the dog's interest which is the broad one and they'll figure out who has a dog if you target Netflix for a dog product Facebook will figure out who inside of the Netflix audience size has a dog and they'll start targeting them so it all comes down to these days trust Facebook seriously guys when I run a product I run like three to four nonsense interests. Like let's just say I'm selling a construction worker helmet. I'm selling a helmet to construction workers. One of my interests will be construction worker, then I'll do construction hats, woodworking, carpentry, and then I'll just do something weird like home, iPhone, and Netflix. Or like I could target Facebook, TikTok, and Window, and, and it works. Like these interests, you know, those random interests are usually the ones that creates most money for me, and they're actually better than the ideal interests you guys think. So golden tip, I know it's gonna be scary for you guys because you haven't heard this thing before. Before, but that's because I've been experimenting a lot with Facebook. So I know some of you guys would probably be in fear and don't do it, but I recommend you guys to do it just do completely random. I almost got demonetized if we're swearing. Just do a random interest every once in a while, or I would say like two to three random interests, and then have four that's on spot. Of course, some of the on spot one will work. So how does CBO work? When do you do CBO? Because the Facebook game has changed. Well, the Facebook always says that CBO is going to become the only way to advertise in September. So it's going to be the only way to advertise in March, February, but it still hasn't happened. So honestly, for me, I'm like, I don't even trust them anymore. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But what you guys can keep in mind is Facebook is changing every single day. And when you're running a CBO, you got to run a CBO at the right time because this is all about being, you know, the timing and everything like that. So when do you run a CBO? Because some of you guys probably watching are testing with CBO turn on. I get I get it. If CBO is your only opportunity to test and you can't test with regular campaigns, then obviously run a CBO. But I would not recommend testing with a CBO. The CBO comes to game. Like usually when I turn on CBO, I tell the guy I'm coaching, I'll just say to him like game time. Now this this is the beginning, you know. So when he turns on the CBO, I'll tell him like this is the game time. This is where everything changes. But you gotta make this decision at the right time. I've said this a million times, but I'll say again. When do you run a CBO? You run a CBO when you have three 
to five ad sets with seven or more sales, maybe even eight, you know. So when your campaign has three to five ad sets and they all have seven or eight sales each, you can click all of those ad sets and duplicate them into a new campaign, which is a CBO campaign. How a CBO works, it's a massive budget. You don't run a $10 CBO. So in that CBO campaign, each ad set equals $50. So if you run three ad sets, that's 50 times 350. You run five ad sets, that's 250 because it's five times $50. If you run 10 ad sets, that's $500 because it's $50 times 10. And I get it guys, you're gonna be so scared when you're trying to run a CBO because it's massive budget, but always before making a decision on a CBO, let the CBO run for $40, give it $4 because it won't make any sales before $40 being spent most likely. After $40, the CBO is well optimized and you're gonna see like 40, 50 sales overnight with really high ROAS, that's how CBO works. And if you don't see those results, you gotta reconsider what you did leading up to the CBO. You gotta make the right strategy. This is not a whole Facebook ad from scratch strategy. Let me know if you guys wanna see it though. But this is not a Facebook ad strategy, it's just talking more about CBOs. So if your CBO doesn't work, you did something wrong in the scale, early scaling phase. But that's usually when we go into CBOs and how Facebook works right now as well is really, it's really vertical. That means, you know, money base, increasing budgets and stuff. You don't really, uh, or you can, but I don't really do any horizontal scaling anymore. I'm gonna be honest, I rarely do it. I do, of course, I do it a little bit on each product, but horizontal is not the way to go. Horizontal scaling usually, you know, just like duplicates and stuff. What I would do, I'll be way hard on the vertical. I don't narrow it down. I'll tell you guys in a second why. Be big on vertical. That means increasing budgets. You got ad set with 10, you got ad set running at $10 a day with three sales, boop, duplicate it, increase the budget to 25. Always when you duplicate and increase the budget or you make any duplicates in general, leave the original one running. But Facebook now is vertical. It means you increase budget. Okay, your $200 CBO does good. Just bump it up to 400. The 400 does good. Put it to 600, 800, 1000. That's how Facebook works these days. It's super vertical. Of course, there are things on the back end. Don't get me wrong. It's not like you can only do vertic vertical and win. Or honestly, I'm going to be honest, you can only do vertical and win. It works. It works every single time. But it's not like you can only do vertical and win. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like claim that that's the only way to go. But vertical works right now, so I definitely like not focus too much on horizontal. And when you look at a Facebook ad video, don't look at the old ones. Just look at the ecom bus or something, because the old ones don't work anymore. Next thing is narrowing things down on Facebook. You don't narrow anything down on Facebook anymore because it doesn't work. If you're gonna narrow anything down, that will be towards countries. But why should you narrow it down toward countries when you could just launch a lookalike, which is a percentage of a country later? If you if you wanna narrow it down to countries, then just don't do it because narrowing down to countries requires more data than narrowing down to a platform like Instagram and Facebook or mobile devices and that stuff. So when you're narrowing down to a country, just think of like, no, I'm not gonna narrow it down to this country. I'd rather just make a lookalike audience later towards one country that actually works that's way better that's a way better way of doing it you know than just running a duplicate where you narrow down to a country when you could actually choose with LLAs look like audience you gotta choose a percentage out of the United States for example as a country but you can choose a percentage out of a country that's more qual that's the most qualified to buy they look like your ideal customer, they look like your similar customers. And when you use a lookalike audience, you will upload the file of your customer emails. You, you, you know, get a Google document or something, not a Google document, but you get a file where you'll upload the emails of your previous customers and Facebook will match these customers with people on Facebook. So they'll see these emails are outside of Facebook. They probably have a subscription on Netflix. They probably, you know, like Justin Bieber a lot. They probably listen to Justin Bieber on Spotify. Facebook will figure out all these things if you just upload an email to them, which means lookalike audience is powerful, but more the store here is you don't narrow down anything you don't narrow anything down really more i mean you can do because it's just a duplicate what, what's the worst case that can happen like you lose ten dollars it's all good but i don't recommend narrowing down because facebook does it for you this is super interesting i'm like a nerd on this thing you don't narrow anything down because facebook does it for you if you hit your breakdown tab on facebook and trying to see which ages it sells to you will see that Facebook rarely spends and Facebook don't show it to anyone in age that doesn't sell. So if 50 to 65 year olds buys your product, Facebook will almost stop sending the product out and advertising it to 25 year olds because they don't buy, which means Facebook optimize it for you, which means you don't have to break down because Facebook just did it for you guys. The next thing is gonna be creatives. So it's gonna be super quick, but you wanna win on Facebook these days, introduce a massive amount of creatives. Creatives are king right now. You have to update your creative daily. No, no, you don't have to do it daily. What am I talking about? Oh, I'm 
I'm stupid. You have to update your creative regularly. That means duplicating your best ad sets into a new campaign and putting like 10 page posts or 10 ads under it, trying to see which creative works the best. You can look at the CDR, but I recommend looking at the purchases. So the creative that does best, you can now bring it back to your old campaign, duplicate your old ad sets, and then, you know, just put the actual good ad under it. And now you just found your good ad. Another really common thing that I see these days are people being too big on lookalikes. They want to get into lookalikes early. First rule, don't run lookalikes before 100 sales. I would even say 150. But the rule that I always teach to people I coach like you don't run a lookalike before you made a hundred purchases And you could even say hundred purchases in one specific country But run a lookalike after hundred purchases, but don't rely on them Usually a lot of people you know that I work with they will always like trying to rush me into the lookalikes But I let them know man or girl We haven't even like gone deep into the scaling phase and the scaling phase will make you more money than LLA's in most cases So I'd be like focus more on scaling and CBOs than you focus on lookalikes because lookalikes are not as powerful as they used to can lookalikes be powerful? Can it make a lot of money? Yes, lookalikes makes a lot of money. But these these days, Facebook is different. Lookalikes don't work like they used to. So I recommend all of you guys watching to like almost like avoid them. But I'm not saying that because I love lookalikes. They're awesome. But don't be too big on lookalikes. Don't rush them. Purchase lookalikes are still good, but they're not like they used to. Lookalikes is not a million dollar formula anymore. So just moral of the story, don't, don't focus too much on lookalikes. It's not that important. Anyways, guys, it's going to be it for today's video. Hope you go down and smash a like on it. You go down to the comments you come to watch the whole way through but definitely make sure you guys smash the like i want to get some likes because then i feel liked i guess and then subscribe because we drop valuable content i gotta remind you guys you want to subscribe to this channel because we we want to grow fast and we're a really good channel so i will be seeing you in the next video tomorrow